All right, Coach Lubick has uh, joined us here, and uh, we'll go right to questions. Um, Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, Matt. Um, thanks for doing this. Um, I'm curious, you know, we saw in the game more of uh, Marcus Fleming and, and Xavier Betts for the first time. What did you make of each of their performances, and what's important for each of them going forward? Uh, yeah, really impressed when they got in and they, they played with confidence. Um, you know, first game jitters, is every coach worries about that. You know, the coaches, we worry about the basic fundamentals. Are we going to line up right? Uh, are we going to run the right route? Are we going to block the right guy? And for the most part, they did that. And, uh, and then secondly, are we going to play with great effort? And they, they did that too. So they did everything we asked of them. As a matter of fact, they probably superseded our, our expectations. And so they're going to continue to get more plays and more opportunities. And they're, they're doing a good job in practice as well. Dan McEwen, Omaha World Herald. Hey, Matt, how do you guys create more big plays? Uh, it's a combination of things. Yeah, that's not that's not an easy. It's a good question. It's not an easy answer. Um, you know, getting the ball in, in playmakers' hands that can make explosive plays. You know, a lot of big plays are are made by when you might call a, a routine play that's designed to get six, seven yards, and guys break tackles. So continuing to get the ball in, in playmakers' hands, um, take advantage of what the defense gives you. Specific coverage looks. If we get a tendency or a clip where. You know, we make that our, our first read and specifically attack that coverage to, to push the ball downfield. Um, taking more shots, which we did this game. We didn't hit all of them, but we took a lot more shots this game than the previous game. Um, and then when we have a chance to make the, the one-on-one catches or the, or the big throw, um, we got to make it. You know, and then a big part of, like, big place for us, too, is in the run game. And, and the run game, that's not just the running back. That's the line, you know, getting them to the second level. And then that's the receivers doing a great job blocking the second level. And so the running back can, can explode. So it's, it's something we talk about all the time is getting more explosive plays. And it's really, it takes every position. It's not just the playmakers. It's the line giving us time to throw the ball downfield. It's the quarterback making the right read. It's the receivers attacking the ball. It's the running backs in, either in pass protection or running hard with the ball in their hands. How do you how do you get Dietrich Mills kind of unlocked a little? He's averaging three yards a carry, which is considerably below where he was last year. Um, how, how do you guys get get some crease runs for him? Sure, you know D Dietrich's doing a good job. He's doing a good, really good job too in pass protection that people don't see. They always see just the, the carries. Um, you know, I got first of all, I got to give credit. We I, we played two darn good defenses, um, really good defenses, um, and so that's a challenge. You know, and obviously we got to rise up to that challenge and and get yards and score points and win the game despite that. But Diedrich specifically, uh, you know, just keep giving him the rock. Because sometimes, you know, as the game goes on, those two and three yard gains all of a sudden turn into six, seven yard gains. And he, he's one of those guys too that gets, be gets better as the game goes on because he's going to bring it every single snap. Um, you know, and give, giving him runs, which he does well. You know, that's, that's a big part of it, the game plan with anybody. If there's something a guy does really well, put him in that situation so he can do it. Lincoln Journal Star, Steve Sipple. Hey, Coach, um, in your role, when would you like, I mean, Scott mentioned yesterday they'll be, you know, the guy, the quarterback's going to compete for the job. In your role, when would you like to see that narrow down during the week? When would be an optimum time? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a hard question to answer because really, I mean, because really with any position. And, and right now, we have a lot of jobs, not just the quarterback position, that are up for grabs. And so we're, this is an open competition week. I mean, we're giving guys, we're starting to make reps equal, which includes the quarterbacks, um, and just giving guys opportunities. You know, and yeah, and there's, you can make an argument that you'd like to have a yeah, clear cut one, but you can also make the argument that you want to have two good quarterbacks that are ready to play. And so, you know, it's, it's, I don't think there's a, it's tough to give you a straight on answer on that one because, and it's not just the quarterback position. It's, we've got really good competition going on at the receiver position. We've got, we're changing some things at the offensive line. We've got competition at, at every position. Um, and it, competition, I'm a big believer, it makes you better, you know, and then and, and because we got to see how guys respond to pressure and competition is pressure. We're going to have pressure in the game and guy, guys are rising to the occasion, you know, and so it's good. Like, for example, Luke, Luke's pushing Adrian, Adrian's pushing Luke, and I think that mutually makes them better. Thank you, Coach. John Callahan, Husker Online. 
the quarterback question, how delicate can that be to manage just through your experience when you've got two good, good guys like Luke and Adrian? And, you know, what do you look for over the course of a week when, when you try to come up with a decision who's going to be your guy for Saturday? Sure. Well, you know, I could see how it could be a delicate situation. The, what we're very grateful for is we've got, I mean, they're two good quarterbacks, but they're two great people. And so both those guys want to win football games. And whoever starts on Saturday, the other guy is going to be his biggest fan. And I really believe that. And that's, that speaks a lot about those two guys. So that, that, that's the first thing. You know, from a quarterback position, we look for consistency, you know, making good decisions. Uh, you know, obviously we evaluate the game, but we also evaluate practice. Um, who's throwing the ball on time, throwing to the right guys. They've both done a great job of making plays with their feet. But it's really it's going to come down to who's, who's playing the most consistent. And then, like at any position, you know, whoever starts the game is who we think at that moment can give us the best chance to win. A couple more for Coach Lubick. Uh, Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Matt, where are you guys at, uh, like drive to drive, in terms of running the offense at the tempo you want right now? Uh, well, we, so it's something we practice all the time it is our tempo and temp, tempo is, is we want it to be a weapon for us. There's so many things that go into that. You know, there's some times where, you know, we want to help our defense out by maintaining the long drive. Um, there's sometimes, you know, we call it the tempo opportunity. This is an opportunity to do tempo because they're doing this. Um, you know, we practice that all the time. I think that's something we can always get better at. You, just like anything, there's something that you can always get a little better. Um, I think we do a good job still pushing the tempo in practice. Uh, we've kind of moved in and out of tempo in, in games. Uh, there's been times, like in the last game, where we did, especially in the two-minute drill, where we sped it up a little bit because we had to, and, and we moved the ball. Um, you know, and, and part of being able to go tempo is having positive plays. You know, and, and when you're, you know, when you're moving the ball and you have a drive going, it's a lot easier to go tempo. Um, you know, the, the one thing about tempo, when, when you have a negative play or you have a false start and then you're behind the chains, you want to get the right play called and, and make sure that everyone's in the right spot and you're attacking what you want to attack, which tempo doesn't always let you do that. Okay, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So there's, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Part of it's how does the defense responding to tempo, you know, if, if uh, and is, is there a weakness the way they line up to a certain tempo formation? So we, we study that every day, you know, and that's a big part of our game plan is, hey, what, what can we tempo? When can we tempo? But to do that, you've got to practice it. You've got to practice it, practice it, practice it. And we've done that all camp and all, all summer. Uh, Derek Peterson, Hale Varsity. Hey, Matt. Um, for lay people outside those meeting rooms, getting Wandale more touches on Saturday seems like it would be as simple as, you know, maybe just dialing up a couple of jet sweeps or putting them in the backfield and giving them a handoff or something. But, you know, I know it's not as simple as that. Um, when you guys... That is a good it is. Though. Well, I mean, it's not... It's a little more complicated on that, but, but what you said is stuff that we can do, you know, and, uh, and we got to do more as far as, you know, giving them carries, just different things. And again, giving him the ball um, of stuff that he does well, which and which and his skill set, he has a lot of things well. You know, he's he's primarily a receiver, and uh, you know they've done some things coverage wise, um, coverage wise, and kind of just game dictations down in distance to uh, you know take take him out of of certain progressions. But that doesn't mean, to your point, there's very simple ways that anyone can understand that we can give him the ball. I and mean, he's proven he can carry the ball in the backfield. He's proven he can carry the ball in fly sweeps. Um, and that's something that we talk about all the, how are we going to get not just Juan Dell, who's a big time playmaker and we got to give him the ball more, but how do we get all our, our playmakers, the ball and, and what they do, you know, like both our quarterbacks are pretty good playmakers. How, how do we get them in situations where they have the ball in their hands and they do same thing with the receiver situation. You know, if we have a specific receiver that needs to get the ball in his hands. We, we think about that in the game plan and we try to design plays to, to make that happen. So you said it, you said it. You guys have played two really good defenses. Uh, Northwestern Ohio State probably might have two of the better defenses in the conference at the end of the year. Like, is it is it more that they are taking him away, or is there something specific that that is that, that on your guys' side of things that's keeping him from getting more involved? Sure, I I, I think it's a combination of things. I think uh, first of all, we can do a better job doing that. But part of it is the is the situation of the game. You know, you might have a specific play where he's getting the ball, but all of a sudden you're in a long yard situation. That play is not ready to. You can't call that play. So part of it's the, the specific situation. 
Um, part of it's the number of plays. Um, you know, part of it too is, you know, we want to is keep putting him in the right spot at the right time. And then part of it is with the defense. So it's, it's a combination of, of, of things. But to answer, in summary, we're, we're working on that and we can do a better job getting him the ball. Thanks, and one, one more for Coach Lubick. Back to Steve Sipple, Lincoln Journal Star. Coach, I, I, I mean, I don't want to dwell on that game on Saturday, but the, I, I do wonder the first three series, you, you had penalties that you know, obviously set you back. Would it, would it be accurate to say those were tone setting type penalties? And what was your level of frustration in the box as, as that was occurring? Yeah, I mean, I think as a coach, and I, and I know our whole team, it, it makes you sick to your stomach because those penalties, number one, is it's, it's us beating ourselves. So I know we've talked about it, and that's, you know, that's not just the people that committed those that's That's everybody. That's on coaches. We, we got we to gotta keep letting them hear, you know, this is how to do it right. This is how to play disciplined football. Um, and there's consequences if they don't play disciplined football. And at the same time, you know, I, when, when I say it's not a, it's, it's, at the, it starts with the coaches. What can we have done better so those penalties don't happen? So that's, it keeps us up at night. We talk about it as a staff. How can we rehearse? How can we be more disciplined? Before we even, that's way more important than any play we draw up, okay? And, and just rehearsing it and rehearsing it. And then when something like that happens in a game, um, it just, it just makes you sick because it, it's very hard statistically to overcome that. Um, all of a sudden now, you know, you're in second and 15. So, I mean, what, what you play into the defense's hands because now your, your play menu is limited and, uh, and they can play a little bit different. You know, they could either, Hey, we're going to put a lot more pressure on this guy or we can play soccer coverage where there's not as many windows to throw the ball. And so it, as opposed to being ahead of the chains where really you can call anything, they have, they have to defend the whole field. They have to defend the run. They have to defend the pass. But when you get in those long yarded situations because of, uh, because of penalties, it's, it's huge. Um, it's a huge percentage of being unsuccessful, but it's huge for the defense that now they can just play certain plays and they don't have to give up the big play, you know, and it's so it's that's really hurts because it really limits what you can do offensively when you get into third and 15, you know. Um, now, we still got to execute those and we still practice those situations, but it's a lot easier and it's just a lot more beneficial to the offense when you're in normal down and distances and calling plays. Thank you, coach. Thank you, coach. Great. Thanks, coach. We'll have Coach Shenander next.